Praise the Lord, everybody. It's good to be in the house of the Lord and good to be with you, gathered unto Christ. Praise God. Uh, our body, our, our brothers and our sisters, uh, and we uh, are so glad to be in fellowship with you uh, through the uh, digital media and being able to put it on the internet and on CDs and DVDs. Um, God has really been blessing us, has he not? Amen. We have so much to be thankful for with Thanksgiving coming up. Uh, we, we, we just cannot uh, say everything that God has done for us. He's a good God. He's a mighty God. He's a loving God. Can you say amen? And uh, it's so good to uh, serve him, to walk with him, to love him, to be uh, used by him, uh, to be in, in the, uh, the working of the field of the kingdom of God. Amen. The, the scripture says that the harvest is ripe, but there's uh, too few of laborers to go out and harvest. So uh, I thank God that uh, we're not lazy in the, in the day of the Lord, that we're willing to commit ourselves to him uh, for his purposes in our lives. And uh, that takes a, a yielding and a surrendering to the Lord. Uh, so anyway, we're going to get on with the rest of the service. Uh, I do want to pray for everyone. Uh, whatever your uh, needs are, the abundant supply of Jesus Christ has met every need. Amen. And uh, all we have to do is access that supply. Can you, can you praise the Lord over that? That he has such a supply for us. And I'm going to have Zach come and lead us in prayer. I know many of you are fi uh, facing dire situations. And I don't take that lightly concerning you. I'm not here to say, well, praise the Lord, brother, go your way. Um, like James said, that we shouldn't be so uh, lackadaisical when it comes to the suffering that our brothers and sisters are going through. And uh, we feel your need. We feel your pain in that need. And we want you to know that Jesus uh, is moved by our infirmities by our emptiness at times, by our loneliness. Amen. But the Lord's with you. The Lord's there to strengthen you. The Lord's there to bring you through. Praise the Lord. I don't want you to think that you're going to die. I want you to think you're going to live. I want that to be in your mind and in your heart, that you're running the race and you continue to run the race until the finish. Amen. So uh, let's, for this amount of time that we have here, which is a very special time to be gathered into the heavens, all together, uh, before the Lord, for him to teach us and for him to help us and strengthen us. At this time, let's, let's uh, uh, let the Lord just remove from us the cares of this world and all of our problems, and let us just go into that secret place of the Most High God. Amen? Come on, Zach. And, uh, 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 and for us to mention all the prayer needs, the Lord knows everyone. In fact, the Lord knows your name. The Lord has the hair of your head numbered, every hair. He knows you intimately, and he is with you constantly. So we are going to ask him to pour out upon you the blessing of the Lord. Amen. Come on, Zach. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank you, Hallelujah. Lord. Let's pray for one another. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just enter into a place of worship and praise this morning. Thank How many you, know we Lord. do that with even out the music? So, hallelujah. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Lord. Hallelujah, Father. Amen. Praise your name, Hallelujah. Lord. Let us be centered in you this morning, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah, Father. Let us forget about all the troubles of this world, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let us find ourselves hid within you, God. Hako Masanda. Not as a way to escape life and to not deal with things, Lord, but as a way to, to have the strength to deal with these things you place within them, Lord. 
Hallelujah. I ask for a covering upon the people this morning, Lord. Amen. For all those in this mighty nation we call Israel, this spiritual place, this spiritual walk within you, Lord, Amen. that we're walking in, Lord, that as we know that as we're overcoming these giants Thank in the Lord. land, Father, we know that it takes your spirit to give us the strength Thank to do you, it, Lord. Lord. So let us be anointed. Let us be appointed like you appointed David to overcome the giant, Lord. Yes. Just, just uh, uh, strengthen us and give us the things we need, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah, Father. So we, we worship you most uh, this you, morning, Lord, Lord that, you, that without Lord. you, all these things aren't possible, God, that, that we can talk about many different things, but without thank your you, son, Lord. Jesus, none of this is possible. So thank Jesus, you, we thank you this thank morning. You, Hallelujah. So we want to minister to some of those with needs this morning. We minister to Ron and Sharon Poach yes, and all the Poach yes, family yes, there. Yes, we just continually minister to the body of Ron Poach that I feel, I feel in my spirit that as we go about our week, we need to minister to the organs within Ron, that I know it may sound crazy to some, but I feel that we need to begin to speak to this body. Yes. Hallelujah. So hear us this morning, O body. Amen. All those vessels and all those cells and all the things within, within his uh, uh, blood vessels and within his brain and all yes. the different things. Hear the voice of the Lord this yes. morning, that as a company comes together to minister the one true word, let it be spoken out into that body. Yes, Hallelujah. As you're sitting there in Georgia this morning, Ron, Hallelujah. with you and Sharon gathered, we know that you're Hallelujah. in the spirit, in the heavens, but we ask that there be a touch in the Lord this morning Hallelujah. in that body, that we ask that that body get caught up into a place in the Lord, a place that there's only glory and only light, Hallelujah. that no death can abide, that that's where our goal is this morning, to enter into that sun realm, that true place in God, where no None of these other things can even affect us. Hallelujah. So catch Ron up into a glory this morning. Him and Sharon both, Lord, that we know that they're one in your spirit, God. So we minister to him continually. Hallelujah. So hear us, O oh body. Hear us. Minister with this creation. Minister to this man, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We just we bless you this morning, Father. Let us let our sacrifices be worthy this morning, Lord. Let us be enough to come before the king and to ask for things, Lord. Yes. Let us be prepared this morning you, to hear your word, to hear your, your you, wisdom this morning, Lord, to set us back on path if we may be strayed. Not just strayed off in the uh, sense that the traditional world thinks of it, but if our soul's just been kept in a hell, whatever hell it may be, let it be set free this morning in your spirit. So I know this is a hell that Ron's walking through in the natural, Lord, that his body's going through some sufferings and some trials, but let him not be overtaken by these trials, but let your spirit put them underfoot as you've done in your vessel, Jesus, as you've overcame all death and all sin in your vessel. Let that be done in a people. Hallelujah, Lord, that we know you're unfolding in your plan of your mysteries, yes, this Lord. great mysterious plan that you've called us in to begin to understand. Amen. Hallelujah. So let that be known in Ron and Sharon's ministry this morning, Father. Amen. Let it be known. Give them a vision, Lord, through these trials. Give them a new Amen. vision for the people of God because we know that there's something greater that you have for this people, Lord. And we know that they're a part of it. So we minister hope Thank and strength Lord. to them, Lord. Hallelujah. And for all those across the country, Lord, Amen. hallelujah. We just speak strength into the body. That we know we're such a crucial time in this day, Lord. Hallelujah. Come up out of your people, Lord. Let us be that city up on the hill. Let us shine forth greatly this morning. Let us be a, a display of light to where, where there's darkness in people's lives. They can begin to see the truth of who you are in the earth, Lord. Let them not look afar off and hope that you come back one day, God. But let them know that you're right there in the midst of them, right within the hearts of all creation. So let man begin to look inward in this day, Lord, that we know that the church is beginning to no longer have answers for the things that people deal with. And so let us be that people that can minister to these things that the church can't minister to, yes. Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. So give us the strength and the wisdom in this day, Lord. Amen. Give us the power of resurrection and glory, Father. Hallelujah. Amen. Just continually carry us into your, into your ways, Lord, and continue to pull us out of our ways, Lord. Hallelujah. I feel something stirring in the heavens this morning. I feel a sincerity yes, and a seriousness yes, going on in the heavens that as this ministry begins to lay down their lives, yes. that the Lord is raising up a new life in the midst of us. Amen. Hallelujah. I know we've had prophecies in days gone past, and I know we've had word given out, and it's not going to fall by the wayside. That's right. But the Lord's saying this morning that there has to be a people with the correctly prepared heart to receive the things that have been prophesied, right. to receive the words that have been given, yes. to receive the revelation that's been written and all the things that have been spoken over this people for the last 
however many years you've been walking in this thing, the Lord says this morning, these words are going to begin to come forth up out of a people, but it's took for a time of preparing, that that's where we've been in the wilderness for the long time, but we're beginning to be prepared of the Lord so that we can come out of that place, that we can come into the land that we're going to take and defeat these giants so that we can begin to prosper so that this kingdom can come to fruition in a company. So I know it's been manifested individually in certain certain ones that there's been leaders, but I hear the Lord saying this morning, get ready for a company of sons to begin to cross that river Jordan and into the promised land, that death can no longer keep us bound down to the things of this world, to this lower nature. There's a greater nature at hand that's making itself known in us. So if you're hearing our words this morning and you may not understand everything we're saying, and that's all right, because at times we don't even know what we're saying at times. But the reality is that there's a Christ within us, the Christ Jesus, that was crucified upon that cross. That's speaking up out of a people that's calling his lost children, the lost sheep of Israel, to come back home, to hear his words, to no longer be dead in the religious systems, in the political systems. Hear us, O sons of God, come up out of these political systems that we get involved in. Hallelujah. All these religious systems, all this mindset that keeps us bound down to a lower nature. Hear the word of the Lord this morning. Get caught up into the sun realm. Lose ourselves for an hour or two. That we go, we get so busy during the week. Just lose ourselves this morning. Lose our comprehension of where we're at or what's going on in our lives. And just be focused upon the Lord. Bow down before his feet and receive the mercies of the Lord. Receive the blessings of the Lord. But that takes a bowing down in our soul to where we no longer are self-serving, but to where we begin to serve the king, the one true king. Hallelujah. So all you kings and priests that are hearing us this morning, hallelujah, set your kingdoms aside. Set your priesthood aside so that we can begin to receive that true kingship and that true priesthood. Because there's a a crucial call this morning. I hear that. I hear a trump being blown as it was in Israel for the people to gather unto the tent of meeting. There's a tent of meeting this morning and it's, it's within us. Hallelujah. We don't have to travel anywhere afar off to begin to receive the word of the Lord or to receive the instructions. But look inward this morning, people. Hallelujah. Listen to the call of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you, Lord. Bless your people. Watch over us as all those that are going to travel this week to different states for fellowship with their families on this time of Thanksgiving. Let it be a rejoicing in the heavens. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you this morning, Father. Amen, Zach. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I took a trip uh, last week uh, and uh, went to uh, Oklahoma, uh, stayed with Gary and Lydia Gatlin there, and then went to um, Bella Vista, Arkansas with uh, David and Debbie Vaught. And uh, uh, Gary and I ministered uh, Sunday morning there at their assembly, and we had a worship service uh, at their home, at David and Debbie's home on Saturday. And we were able to put it live on Facebook, and that was a blessing. And we had a lot of people join in with us. And uh, there's something about worship. There's just something about songs that have been written by the Spirit. You know, worldly people write songs, and a lot of times their, their, their words are just They're trying to find words that will rhyme and uh, put a a snappy tune to it. Um, But, you know, when you hear a a song that has been written genuinely and authentically from the Spirit, uh, there's a difference in it. There's just something different in it. Uh, It's uh, You can hear the voice of God in it it reaches into a part of you. And, uh, and uh, so many people were blessed by, the, by that worship. And um, uh, I'll tell you, Charlotte has written songs, of course. I, I imagine she has written uh, over 200. And uh, I'm sure she has because uh, I'm looking at our songbook here and it's, it goes up to... Um, 158 just in the songbook and that's uh 20 years ago so uh she uh she has uh, been given songs of the spirit that 
That was a big part of her ministry. They've been sung all over the world. Um, and I, But I, I have been uh, feeling her presence uh, lately very strongly. In fact, on the trip uh, to Oklahoma, uh, I was traveling on Interstate 40, and Charlotte and I together made uh, an innumerable company, uh, 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 a innumerable uh, number of trips down Interstate 40, going west. Uh, and uh, I found myself reminiscing on all the things that we experienced. Uh, Charlotte and I, when we would travel, we uh, would travel at night a lot of times, through the night. Uh, to get to where we were going. And it was a special time in God, the nighttime. Seemed like uh, the heavens uh, were ha had so much less noise in them. Uh, we were able to really have some divine uh, events happen in our lives. Uh, uh, riding in the middle of the night, uh, worshiping the Lord together. And I found myself telling her, do you remember this? And do you remember that? <laughs> um, you know, it was really something to remember those times. And like I say, I've been feeling her very close lately. But uh, I'm going to uh, attempt to sing songs this morning that Charlotte wrote, but that I didn't sing. She sang them. And it's always uh, humbling to try to sing uh, songs that Charlotte sang because she sang it with a, a, an anointing that you, only comes from the one that, that wrote the song. But I feel like somebody needs to hear these words this morning. I feel a time of rest. That's why I was saying, let's draw aside for just a little bit here. You need to rest a little bit. You need a break from all of your struggles, from your fight of the faith, from your battles that God is uh, enabling you to fight. And there comes a time when you just have to get alone and you just have to have a time to where you can just relax and hear God. Amen. So I hope that the worship today will speak to you and that um, these songs that the Spirit told me to sing will have that, that word in it because these are message songs. They're, they have a message in them. And if we have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to us, it will cause us to be raised up above our circumstances and will give us the power to speak with the authority of the, of the nature of Jesus, our Lord, and cause these circumstances to change. Amen. The day is at hand. No flesh shall stand. For Jesus the Christ now speaks forth with new life out of mortal man. Stand on your feet. The trumpet blows. Ascension time's here to make one whole new man, body, spirit, and soul. And like an eagle Oh, I'm sorry, I have gotten off key. Mm. <laughs> Trying to sing it in my key. <laughs> the day's at hand. No flesh shall stand. For Jesus the Christ now speaks forth with new life out of mortal man. Stand on your feet. The trumpet blows. 
ascension times here to make one whole new man, body, spirit, and soul. And like an eagle will soar to a secret place high. Till the storm's over pass And we no longer die Just men spirits cry loud To see life on both sides of the river of life so it's here we'll abide like an eagle will soar To a secret place high. Oh, yes, Lord, hallelujah. Till the storms overpass. And we no longer die. Just men's spirits cry love to see life on both sides yes Lord of the river of life so it's here we will abide the days at hand no flesh shall stand for Jesus the Christ now speaks forth with new life out of mortal man stand on your feet the trumpet blows Ascension time's here to make one whole new man, body, spirit, and soul. And like an eagle will soar. Come on, let's soar to a secret place high. Amen. Till the storm's over pass And we no longer die Oh, just men spirits cry loud To see life on Sides. I hear that cry, amen, of the river of life. So it's here we will abide. Sing with me if you know it. Like an eagle will soar. To a secret place high, yes, Lord, till the storm's over pass, and we no longer die, or oh, just men's spirits. 
cry loud to see life on both sides of the river of life so it's here we'll abide for we are fearfully and wonderfully made through the substance of his glory every man will be saved oh every cell will awake and on wings take their flight to expel all the darkness and bring forth his light. For we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Through the substance of his glory every man will be saved yes every cell will awake and on wings take their flight to expel all the darkness and bring forth his light thank you Lord hallelujah for we are fearfully and wonderfully made through the substance of his glory Every man will be saved. Every cell will awake and on wings take their flight. Come on, hallelujah, to expel all the darkness and bring forth his light we're gonna expel all the darkness amen for we are fearfully and wonderfully made through the substance of his glory thank you lord every man will be saved oh every cell will awake and on wings take their flight to expel all the darkness to expel all our darkness yes to expel all the darkness and bring forth his light hallelujah 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 Lord, do your mighty work, Almighty oh God. Hallelujah. Take your flight, take your flight today. 
May all the darkness leave you. Hallelujah. May the light come. May the light come into your mind, into your heart. May the Lord cast upon you his glory. Hallelujah. Oh, what a mighty God, what a mighty God, what a mighty God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord. Your day has come, almighty Lord. Oh, let it shine upon us, almighty God. Shine forth, thou mighty Christ, in rays of brilliant life. Rise up, rise up, rise up, O day, and shine your light in a new way. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, let us be changed in you, O Lord. Transform us by the renewing of our mind. Oh, Father, let the river of life run freely through our heart. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord. Cast your bread upon the waters. In many days it shall return. Give a portion to the hungry. For it's the bread of life they yearn. Be not silent, all ye watchmen. For the harvest time has come. <laughs> yes, Lord. Now go forth, ye mighty reapers. For the battle has begun. Oh, ye flames of fire, hear the word of the Lord. Ye have clean hands and pure heart, and in your mouth is a sword. Go separate the tares from the wheat, now I say. And bundle them to burn, for you're the fire that I'll use. Take out all that offense and all iniquity too. And we'll break bread and drink wine in my kingdom anew. Hey, hey. Oh, ye flames of fire, hear the word of the Lord. Ye have clean hands and pure heart, and in your mouth is a sword. Go separate the tares from the wheat, now I say. Oh, and bundle them to burn, for you're the fire that I'll use. Take out all that offense and all iniquity too. And we'll break bread and drink wine in my kingdom anew. Hey, ye flames of fire, hear the word of the Lord. Ye have clean hands and pure heart, and in your mouth is a sword. Go separate the tares from the wheat, now I say. Oh, and bundle them to burn, for you're the fire that I'll use. Take out all that offense and all iniquity too. And we'll break bread and drink wine in my kingdom anew. Oh, and we'll break bread and drink wine in my kingdom anew. So cast your bread upon the waters. Many days it shall return. Yes, it will. Give a portion. To the hungry, for it's the bread of life they yearn. 
be not silent, all ye watchmen. For the harvest time has come. Now go forth, ye mighty reapers, for the battle has begun. Oh, ye flames of fire, hear the word of the Lord. Ye have clean hands and pure heart, and in your mouth is a sword. Go separate the tares from the wheat. Now I say, Oh, and bundle them to burn, for you're the fire that I'll use. Take out all that offense and all iniquity too. And we'll break bread and drink wine in my kingdom anew. Oh, ye flames of fire, hear the word of the Lord. Ye have clean hands and pure heart, and in your mouth is a sword. Go separate the tares from the wheat. Now I say, Oh, and bundle them to burn, for you're the fire that I'll use. Take out all that offense and all iniquity too. And we'll break bread and drink wine in my kingdom anew. Come on, let's break some bread and drink wine. Oh, ye flames of fire, hear the word of the Lord. Ye have clean hands and pure heart, and in your mouth is a sword. Go separate the tares from the wheat. Now I say, Oh, and bundle them to burn, for you're the fire that I'll use. Take out all that offense and all iniquity too. And we'll break bread and drink wine in my kingdom anew. Oh, and we'll break bread and drink wine in my kingdom anew. Come on, everybody. And we'll break bread and drink wine in my kingdom anew. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Cast your bread upon the waters. In many days it shall return. Woo, I love that. Hallelujah. Amen. We're casting upon the waters that which the Lord has given to us freely, freely. We give it out. Amen. Holding no man uh, to any kind of a a bargain with it or or some kind of a compensation on it. Hallelujah. No strings attached. Amen. The word of the Lord is going out because it's in our mouth. It's a sword in our mouth. Hallelujah. And and when the, that bread comes back in, uh, the song says, then give a portion to the hungry. You know, we forget to give back. when It, when it, it just continually is a process of giving. Giving and giving and giving more. Every time you give, God brings back more. But you don't stop there. You give that, and God brings back more. And then you give that. Hallelujah. And I'm speaking spiritually, folks. Hallelujah. So that it's not about you. It's about everyone that needs and is yearning for the bread of life. And that is all creation. All creation is groaning and travailing for the word of the Lord, for the bread of life, to know the reality of God in their lives. Amen. Hallelujah. So I I hope you hear these words that the song, uh, the message of the song is speaking to us. Amen. Because it's a a message uh, that we all need right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come, all ye who are weary, and I will give thee rest. I will give thee rest. I will give thee rest. My yoke, it is easy, and my burden is light. I'm going to lead you, and you'll have perfect sight. For ye did run well, so who shall hinder thee? Oh, who shall hinder thee? Tell me now who shall hinder thee? 
These trials have been given So I may set you free And a pillar in my house you'll be Come all ye who are weary And I will give thee rest I will give thee rest I will give thee rest My yoke it is easy And my burden is light I'm gonna lead you And you'll have perfect sight Oh yes Lord For ye did run well So who shall hinder thee Tell me who shall hinder thee Hey, who shall hinder thee These trials have been given So I may set you free May a pillar in my house you be Oh, now come all ye who were weary And I will give thee rest I will give thee rest Come on, rest I will give thee rest My yoke, it is easy And my burden is light I'm gonna lead you And you'll have perfect sight Thank you for it, Lord For ye did run well Who shall hinder thee? Who shall hinder thee? Oh, who shall hinder thee? These trials have been given So I may set you free And a pillar in my house you'll be Oh, and a pillar in my house you be. Amen, Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I have something on my heart this morning um, that I want to, uh, some things I want to say. Um, and as a father in the Lord, I want to um, I want to give some counsel to us this morning concerning um, our message, the kingdom um, of getting rid of some of the old doctrines that have been implanted within us. And we do want to go beyond the church realm, the church system. Uh, there, there's a church system, and we need to uh, qualify that. Uh, there is the church, and we don't want to go beyond the church. It is the body of Christ, and uh, we all make up the church. And uh, But the system that calls itself the church is that which we have to come out from. We have to be separated from it. We have to allow God to bring us to a place where it has no more influence on us. It has no more ability to bind us and burden us and hinder us to have us looking at distractions, uh, to be devil conscious. Uh, Now, I do believe that there is a devil. But by devil conscious, I mean where we think the devil has power that he doesn't have. The devil is nothing more than a tool in the hands of the Lord. He has to gain permission to do anything in order to try the saints. That's his job. 
That's his, uh, his uh, reason for being is to be an opposing force, an adversary against what God is doing in a people. Now, why do you suppose that God created an adversary to begin with? Well, just like with your natural body. Your natural body grows stronger as it moves against resistance. That's the whole purpose of exercising. That's the whole purpose of weightlifting or anything else that people do in order to uh, make their bodies stronger, healthier, give themselves more energy, is that they go into a, a, a weight room and they pick out weights and those weights become their adversary to their body. Their body has to lift and resist those weights moving against gravity, lifting them up, curling them, chest pressing them, uh, leg uh, pressing them. Uh, all the things that we do with our body when we work out, uh, the muscles have to be broken down so that they can be built back up again. In fact, your whole body, your whole natural body is built on that um, very uh, concept is that there has to be the removal of things in order for there to come greater things. Uh, once we uh, tear down something in our body, the body has a mechanism, a biological mechanism, whereby it's going to build it back up, but it's going to build it back up stronger than what it was before it was tore down. And that is the mechanism in God. The trials of our life, the afflictions that we find ourselves under are not a punishment. They are an instruction. They are a teaching, a lesson that God wants us to uh, be uh, the partakers of so that we can come out of those lessons with more having been done within us than what we had before we went into it. Uh, on Facebook, you, you read a lot of different things on Facebook. Uh, it's both uh, wonderful and ugly. Uh, life and death is, in, is on Facebook. Uh, but... Uh, also, it, 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 it makes it very well known uh, the different things that people think about God. Um, it's amazing what people think about God, to tell you the truth. It, it, you have to shake your head and say, wow, how did they get to that? How, where did that come from? And uh, there is a built-in instinct in man that wants to worship God. But it's also the nature of man to create. And especially when it comes to God. Man's nature is to create a customized God a God that they themselves have put together. Not the God of the Bible, not the God that we know through our personal experience with him, but the God that would be the best for them to be able to relate to. And so you get all of these strange doctrines that are coming up now quite prevalently and that, and one of those is something that it just, uh, it just, it just grinds uh, me when I when I read it. Uh, it. It is just so foolish, and that is the fact that God will not put us through anything to teach us a lesson. There's there's a ministry that goes about saying that 
Uh, the only reason why we go through anything uh, is just because we allowed it to happen. Now, I'm going to tell you the balance of all of this. There, God is a consuming fire. So there's no way that you're going to get closer to God and not get burned. There's no way that you're going to get closer to God without something in you burning up, without something in you uh, deconstructing. And uh, that's what fire does, is it releases atoms. And it releases the hydrogen atoms so that, uh, and the carbon atoms, so that everything that, you're, that holds you together or holds a log together, when you put it in a fireplace, that fire feeds on that log, on the oxygen and the carbons of it, and it literally releases all the, uh, all the atoms that are made up of pure elements back to their pure elemental state. So that the log, which is a compound of many, many things, chemically, when the fire's done with it, it's down to ash. And we say, well, you know, that log was destroyed. But really, it was changed into its uh, original, pure elemental form. Everything within it that had been bound together with another element had been released, and now it's back to oxygen, hydrogen, uh, 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 carbon, whatever else it, it was made up of. Um, so we know that if we're going to get close to God, if we're going to get, be made one with God, God being a consuming fire is going to consume something within us. What is that that the fire is consuming? That which is in disarrangement. That which is bound to something else that it should not be bound to. That which has been molded and made by an earthly dimension, by a church system, by uh, concepts and doctrines that are made up in order that people themselves will feel better about God. Uh, you know, a lot of the doctrines of the church system are to have authority over people, and now, uh, such as uh, eternal damnation, lake of fire, uh, uh, the rapture, all of that are doctrines that the church has added into it in order to keep people fearful of leaving the church, of leaving the, the, the pastor uh, and the bishops and the elders of that church and go find God on their own. They want them staying right there so they make them fearful of ever leaving that place. Uh, other doctrines, today especially, because it is uh, the age that we live in is an age that wants everything easy. The age that we live in wants everything fast and they want it easy. They're always looking for the easy button. And they're want, they don't want at all to have to uh, get into a spiritual state. They want everything to be ministered to them on a realm that their natural mind will be able to comprehend. Uh, in fact, I see now the charismatic movements, uh, a lot of your big mega churches, their message is just what the natural mind can comprehend. And they make out God out to be their buddy their friend, their, their, their bro. Uh, they, they, they make God out to be this uh, 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 nothing more than just a, a, a wispy, um, a cotton candy type of a God, that, that there wouldn't be any uh, problem in getting to know him relationally. And that's a word that's a buzzword right now. We all, it's all about relationship, you know. And so they say, well, now God is a father and a wonderful, loving God, and he would never, ever cause me to go under any stress or distress or cause me uh, to cry out to him uh, uh, for release of anything. Uh, he wants us all just to be on a smooth road and just everything's hunky-dory. 
you know, he's my bud, he's my bro, and me and him are together, and he doesn't expect anything out of me. I, I, I can just be like I am right now, and he loves me like I am. And these are all half-truths. He loves me just like I am, and why would God want to change me since he made me like I am? So uh, they get into this thing to where uh, a, a lot of good friends of mine believe in that kind of a custom-built God to where all of a sudden uh, there is no trials, there are no purgings, there is no fire, just, uh, uh, just, us, just us living life and God being all right with it. And that's okay, that's how children are. You know, children aren't expected to be anything other than children. Babies especially get all kinds of uh, leniency and uh, they can do anything and not get in a bunch of trouble with it. <laughs> they can poop their pants for crying out loud. They can pee and poop and throw up and every other disgusting thing you'd ever want them to do. Hallelujah. And it's fine because they're babies. There is nothing more expected of them. That's what babies do. But our God is plurality. He's many things. He's not just a loving God. Although everything he does revolves around love. But some of the things that he allows to happen in our lives are not lovely at that moment. At that moment, they are adversaries. Now, why would God send us adversaries? Because we cannot stay babies. We cannot stay children. Now, the, the religious systems have nothing but children. And when they do allow anyone to get into a more mature state, they cause them to become a part of the problem of keeping children children. In other words, don't let them know what we know. They're children. That is one of the big things that people don't, uh, that pastors throughout uh, the world are not ministering reconciliation. And that is because they think it's too difficult for their people to accept. They don't want to preach reconciliation because their people will be rejected. And guess what? They'll leave the church. So uh, their, their, uh, uh, their only uh, uh, alternative is to not preach it or disguise it in such a way that the people don't even know what they're talking about. Just so long as they don't think that they're ministering, all men are going to be saved. Because the minute you say that, the brain, brain locks. The natural brain says, what? How is that? Because it has been taught all the religious doctrines have gone into the logical brain. And when the truth comes out, the brain locks up on it and says, I can't receive that. Well, no wonder because the scripture says that uh, the, the natural man cannot receive the things of God. Even if he wanted to, he couldn't receive the things of God. They are spiritually discerned. And that is where we find ourselves at in this day speaking a spiritual word that needs a spiritual people to hear it. It can't be heard by a religious spirit. It can't be heard by a natural spirit. It has to be heard by those who are spiritually minded. And, uh, and God is, 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 is causing us, especially in our ministry, to speak spiritual things so that those that are spiritual can start to learn the business of God. That's what Jesus told Mary when she found him in the temple. And at 12 years old, he had gone into the temple and he was discoursing with the scholars, teaching them things that they had not even heard of concerning the scriptures. And Mary told them to go in and get him and bring him out. And when he came out, he said, I would you not want, what have I to do with you, woman? I am about my father's business. Business. 
God has a business. It's not all about you being blessed every day of your life, being rich, being famous, and being good looking. That isn't his main agenda. His main agenda is to make a man. God's agenda is to make a corporate, many-membered man in the earth, made up of chosen vessels all over the world. Every skin, color, every culture, every lineage, he is bringing together a people that are going to become a new man together. Whatever they are, whatever they look like, whatever their skin coloring is, whatever their culture is, that's not who they're going to remain. They're going to be made into a new creature in Christ. There is no white, black, red, or yellow in, in, in the kingdom of God. It's all a people who have one blood amongst them. Hallelujah. One faith, one Lord, one baptism. Hallelujah. One God. Amen. And they are all being made by God to come into a conformity unto his image. You see, we cannot make God into this customized God that we can relate to. Uh, you know, uh, I read on Facebook where they were saying, well, how, how, if God did cause us to go through a trial or an affliction in order to learn something, how in the world would I ever relate to that kind of God? Well, guess what? You may not relate in the natural, to that kind of God. But he's not coming down to our, our conformity. God, God is not being conformed to us. Listen to this, hallelujah. We must conform to him. We are not to be conformed to the world. We're to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. We cannot stay in this thing to where we think God's not fair. Well, of course he's not fair. According to our carnal understanding, he's not fair in that sense. But who, whoever thought that God would be fair? Now he's just and, uh, and, and he is righteous, but many of God's ways do not seem fair to our natural carnal man. Our natural carnal man wants the easy road. God's uh, plan is for us to be mountain climbers. So how does God get us out of an easy road mentality into being an overcomer, into being more than conquerors through Christ? Well, first of all, he's got to put something in our path that is going to make us stop and consider. And, and by doing that, he's going to do whatever is necessary in order to bring his sons into glory. He's not going to, uh, all, all, everything's on the table with God when it comes to that. He will use anything that has to be used in order to bring a chosen designated vessel from, from a place that they themselves have put themselves into, into a place where God's purpose is for them to be in. Hallelujah. And that means a fire. Uh, 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 that means that God's going to cause something to come into your life that's going to cause you to say, whoa, I better go to the Lord with this. Things aren't right going on here. What does God want me to do? Uh, how else is God going to be able to train us if he doesn't have lessons that he puts us through in order to show us a more excellent way? Uh, it's an unteachable spirit that is in the midst of these that's, that think that God would never, ever, ever cause us to go through a hardship in order to bring us into another place in him. That is an unteachable spirit. The truth of the matter is, God is wanting to teach us his ways. How, how do you do when you go to school? Well, the teacher doesn't teach you in a class and tell you just what you know. You're at school to learn what you don't know. And, and every child, if you asked him, <laughs> every child, I know if you would have asked me, I know what my answer was. Do you want to go to school and learn today? I would have said, no, I want to uh, go outside. I'm going to play ball. 
I'm going to read a comic book. I'm going to lay around the house. I'm going to play army men. All of that. So what did they do? What did my parents do? They made me go to school. Not by my own willingness, but they made me go to school. There was dire consequences if I did not go to school. Now that's a good parent. And God is our parent, our father. My father and every father has two hands. And one is going to be the hand that he pats us on our back with, and the other one's going to be the hand that he smacks our butt with. He is going to make us to know what his will is. And it is a rebellious people, a rebellious generation that wants God to be the kind of God they want so that they can, quote, unquote, relate to him. We cannot relate to God in the natural sense, no matter what we're doing. He's incomprehensible in that way. The only way we're going to know him is through a yielded spirit. And believe me, uh, an animal has more parental skills than us, these pastors do and these preachers do that are preaching such un, uh, uh, ungodly doctrines as this. Uh, my uh, granddaughter just got a puppy. And bless her heart, she texted me and said, Papa, I need help. How do I, how do I uh, housebreak this dog? He's peeing and pooping all over the house. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. And every puppy does that, right? But, but this is a fascinating thing. Before my granddaughter or anybody else gets a puppy, that puppy in the uh, uh, birthing uh, pen where the, where, where the mother nurses them and where the mother sleeps with them, that uh, female mother dog has, all, has already trained them not to pee or poop anywhere near her. And I'll tell you the way that she teaches them is through the sharpness of her teeth. Not a bite that would destroy them, a nip and a growl and a loudness to her. Her demeanor changes. If they go to squat, her demeanor changes. And she teaches them to go away from where they're uh, sleeping and eating at. And then when we get them, we get them home and we love on them and we're just this, oh, wonderful little thing. And then all of a sudden, guess what? There's no mama dog around to nip. So all of a sudden, they're going right back to bad old habits, just, just peeing and pooping all over the place. So that we have to reinforce back what mother has already done was to teach them this is not where we go. We go outside to a certain place, and it's a process because we're not going to nip them. We're going to try and do it as gentle as we can, but the mother has the right idea of it. She nips it in the bud. She makes sure that, they're, that they know that, and, and every time they try to go against that will, there is a consequence to it. Well, I'll tell you, we are sons of God. We are kings and priests. And I heard that on this Facebook post. Well, I'm a king and I'm a priest. And uh, God isn't going to make me go through anything. Oh, my Lord, give me a break. If you are a king and a priest, you're going to be going through more than anybody else ever did. Believe me when I say that. Uh, you can be under uh, tutors and governors and not go through anything harsh. But when you're the son of a king... When you're under tutors and governors for a space, then you're brought out from underneath the normal schooling and you're putting yourself into a specialized tutoring and governing where there's going to be more expected out of you than out of the children that, that are going to be brick masons and they're going to be cooks and they're going to be um, all, uh, uh, very, very, uh, uh, you know, not, not to down any vocations that way, but that's what they're going to be in life is a, lower, is, is a lower job. But this child, this son of the king, 
he's going into the throne. And by the time that he gets to the throne, he's got to have wisdom and knowledge and understanding. He's got to have discernment. He's got to be able to, to balance out love with judgment, to sentence both life and death, to be able to make sure that his kingdom is the best kingdom that he can make it. So, so that's where we're at. We're, we've got a, 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 a designated spot that's going to be into the throne of God to get us there. God is going to be doing some things to us. He's going to mess with us. Amen. And by doing that, he is going to make sure that when we do get there, we are going to be able to be that which God wants us to be. Just to reinforce this, because uh, I want to read a scripture in, in, in Hebrews, the 12th chapter, the first verse. It says, Wherefore, seeing we also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him uh, that endured such contradiction uh, against him of, of uh, well, I don't know why that's blank. Uh, for consider him that endures such contradiction against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. I believe it's supposed to be sinners. Such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. You have not yet resisted unto blood. Not yet. Didn't say you will not. You have not yet resisted unto blood as Jesus did, striving against sin. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint. When thou art rebuked of him. Oh, God would never rebuke me. Just wait. The rebuke's coming. Believe me. Hallelujah. We have all been rebuked in our childhood. We have all been said, no, you don't do that. We have all had our parents say, no, you can't do that. We have all, and, and I said this before, if all you've ever heard from God was things that you liked, things that you could relate to, then I question whether or not you've actually heard from God. Because God isn't always going to say, sure, do whatever you want to do that way. He's going to keep us onto him and teach us a better, more excellent way. So uh, that thou faint not when you are rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as sons. For what son is he whom the father chastens not? But if you be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are you bastards and not sons. Now that's a hard word, but it's a hard word that we need to hear right now. If we keep grumbling and complaining because we can't relate to this unfairness that God's putting us through, then you're going to miss out the whole purpose of the lesson. Why don't you try raising your hands unto the Lord? Why don't you try letting your mouth be filled with praise and glory unto him, regardless of the circumstance that we find ourselves in? Why don't we start to embrace what God is doing in our lives instead of fighting against it, Hallelujah, why don't we embrace it and allow it to work its marvelous work in us so that we can come out from it well and healed and made whole. Hallelujah. But, but if we keep bickering like some stranger would, then, then we will not realize any benefits from it. 
And, and I fear that that's what all of these that are believing in this kind of a mentality are going to find themselves in. To where they cannot do it in their own strength to deliver themselves out of those circumstances. Then they're going to start blaming God and saying, God, I'm not going to serve you because you're, you're not the God I thought you were. Well, of course he isn't. You thought he was a jelly bean God, something sweet and wonderful, something put in your mouth and it just melt like, uh, like, like butter. But he's not. He's a real God. He is a mighty God, a sacred God. He's a God for us to, yes, fear and tremble in the midst of. He's not playing games. He's not playing your church games with you anymore. He is the God that's going to cause you to become a burning brand in the earth. Hallelujah. That is going to set you on fire and make you a minister of the flames of fire. Hallelujah. So that you start catching other things on fire with that with that God flame. Hallelujah. But but we're going away that isn't going to life, it's going to destruction. And God has to change our course. God has to get our attention. God has to in, uh, cause us to ponder and consider our circumstance and see what the Lord would want to speak to us about it. Amen? It says, furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection under the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure. But he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. No, we don't want to go to school today. No, we don't want to uh, have a lesson and have the teacher challenge us. We want to go play soldiers. We want to go play basketball and do all the things the other children are doing. But I'm telling you, you are designated for something in this day that is going to bring an end to all suffering. It is going to bring an end to all death. It is going to bring an end to a corruptible state. Hallelujah, that humanity finds itself in. You are going to be destined for that. And even if you go on the other side of the river, you are still going to be designated to join with us on this side in order to do these things. You must accept the Lord as he is. You must accept him in all of his ways. We have to stop despising the chastening of the Lord and start and that was the message during our conference, our in-gathering this year. And that was, we must fall in love with the fire. We must fall in love with the wilderness. And realize that without these things, we will not be able to be what God wants us to be. Uh, the clay cannot say to the potter, I want to be this and I want to be that. The potter's the one that puts the clay on the wheel and starts turning the wheel. And out of the heart of the potter comes the image that he wants the clay to be in. And he starts to mold it and make it and spin it and groove it and smooth it until it takes on the form that he wants it to take on. And then... When it's all done forming and it's a, a, a vessel of honor unto him, whether it be a bowl or a cup or a dish or whatever, then because it's clay, he doesn't stop just in the molding and the forming of it. He removes it from the wheel and he puts it in an oven and he bakes it in that oven so hot that the, 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 the elemental particles of that clay start to change and it hardens. And by the time that it's done uh, with uh, being baked in the heat, when it's brought out at its right time, 
Whatever drink goes into that, uh, that vessel will have no taste of the clay itself. Hallelujah. When we present Christ to the world, when he comes in his saints, when he appears in his people, and he starts to reveal himself to the nations, there can be none of us in there. There can't be the smell of man, the taste of man, the taste of Adam, the taste of corruption. It has to be divine. Christ is in us, and that's all that's tasted. His, his blood, his wine, his bread, hallelujah, with no taint of our corruption in it. Amen. I hate to tell you this, but it's not going to get any better. It's going to get worse until we learn to embrace it, until we learn to give glory to God over it. Until we allow God to change our mind, change our heart, change our nature. Until we become that which the Lord has set us in the earth to become. Hallelujah. It's not about the rich and the beautiful. It's about servants of God. It's about sons. Hallelujah. Who are love servants unto their father. Who are willing to do all that he wants them to do. Else what would we do if God said I want you to go to this place. And it was a place that we didn't want to go to. And we would end up rebuking the Lord. And saying I don't want to do that. But this servant. This son that God is making will be uh, 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 able to obey him in all things. Hallelujah. There's no shadow of turning within them. There is nothing within them that questions him. It is a people who have the mind of God in themselves, who have no uh, aggressive, uh, 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 adver uh, adverse reactions against God when God tells them to do something that they would not. Hallelujah. That was his word to, to Simon Peter, was it not? That the time will come when another will lead you about and you'll go where you would not go and another will dress you and another will feed you. Amen. That is our problem, our pride of ego. We can't bring it into the kingdom. We can't bring these idols of Babylon into this day of the Lord. Believe me, there are many, many things that God does for us that all of them are not beautiful. A lot of them are those things that challenge us, that cause us to cry aloud. Hallelujah. To causes us to grab the horns of the altar causes us to cry and weep and groan. Amen. Amen. That's all a part of it. That's all a part of it. Our natural man groans, travails against these things because that's still a part of our nature. Amen. But the day will come, God's faithful, where we will be singing in the night. Hallelujah where we'll be having nothing but praise and worship upon our lips. We'll sing a new song. Amen. Hallelujah. In the midst of the lion's den, we'll lay down and sleep. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Because rest is upon us. Peace is upon us. Let not your hearts be troubled. Hallelujah. Let not your spirit rage. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. This day, this day is the Lord's day. And he's in control of it. And these things that you face today, you will see them no more. Amen. Hallelujah. These lords that have had dominion over us, we will see them no more. Our name is being changed because this is the day of the Lord. Rise up, sons. Hallelujah. Take your, your inheritance in him. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let there be no grumbling or complaining within us. Stop treating God like he's a man. He is almighty God. 
God. Bow down before Him. Oh, love and adore Him. Glory to God. Because He is mighty in the midst of you. Don't think that He is not a God of reverence because He is. Take off your shoes when you approach Him. Take off your sandals. Get on your knee before Him. Bow the knee and confess the confession for He is your God. Hallelujah. And He will lift you up. He will set your feet on a solid rock. He will fight your enemies for you. He will transform you and make you into a song in the earth. Glory to God. Amen. All we need to do is stay yielded and true unto Him and let us not think that He is against us. He is all for us, but He will resist that carnal nature of us. Hallelujah. Amen. He has his face turned against it. It is a fearful thing to be in the hands of a jealous, angry God. Now understand what that means. Anger against you? No. Anger against those things that are holding you back. You are a child of God. You are spirit. You are not that nature. Hallelujah. That is the nature of Adam. But the nature of Christ is in you also. Hallelujah. And God is going to uh, cause us to fully turn into the nature, the image, and the likeness of our God. I wish I could say to you, oh, hey, you can relate to God. He just wants you to have a wonderful life, and he just wants you to be without any pressure, be without any stress, uh, just go out and do the best you can in, the, in this world. But I, I, I want to tell you the truth. The truth is that God's going to teach us many, many lessons. If I was to think that I would go through all the things I've been through in my life and I wouldn't ever learn anything from them, God help me. Amen. Everything I have gone through in my life because I saw it in the right perspective caused God to increase in me. And naturally when God increases, we decrease. Praise the Lord. Hard words, hard sayings, get ready. God's going to have a lot of hard sayings for us to our natural mind. But our inner man leaps at this, understands it, yearns for it wants us to be able to allow God to start to bring us forth in our ministries, in our word. Our word has to change. Our word has to be true. We can't afford to have the tinkling cymbals and sounding brass in our ministries. We have to stay in the place of truth in order for us to give a clear trumpet sound that will, that will raise up in the midst of the people a, a spirit of God that will cause them to hear his voice. Hallelujah. But if we're after numbers, if we're after a bunch of people, uh, if we're after a bunch of money, then, then this is not that. This is that which speaks to the heart of men, to those who are designated to hear it with their ears, but with ears of the spirit. Praise the Lord. Who have those ears to hear what the Lord is saying to the true church and not the church of Babylonian church systems. Hallelujah. What a day it is. Amen. What a, what, what a glorious time for us to gather into him. Well, I appreciate you, Zach. Have you got anything else to add or anything? Um, we do want to uh, let you know that uh, uh, we have a GoFundMe uh, on uh, Facebook that uh, you can go to our page to see the link to it. We're raising funds uh, to be able to pay for every uh, uh, youth and young adult to attend our family conference uh, meeting this year in July. And uh, uh, in order for us to be able to buy the food for them, to house them, uh, to be able to provide all the activities that we want to provide for them, 
to pay for uh, those that ministry that come from a distance, and we need to give them an offering for that. Uh, we want you to help us to be able to raise these funds. If you can't come yourself, then adopt a child uh, or adopt a family and uh, give funds into the Go, uh, GoFundMe. Uh, we, are, we are doing this. Uh, our, our Kingdom Family Conferences are going to be uh, with the name of Charlotte uh, 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 on it, the Charlotte A. Taranjo uh, Memorial uh, Kingdom Family Conference. And uh, her heart was with the young people, and uh, especially the young people. Her heart was with everyone, but her heart was especially for the young people. And of course, we'll be glad if you send your children, but it'd be even greater if you would come with them so the whole family could participate in the things that God wants to speak to us and do for us. There's, lives are changed at these meetings. Amen. Families are bound together in Christ through these meetings. And, 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 the, and, and it gives a time for the young people to meet other young people and uh, become friends, lifelong friends through these type of gatherings, uh, and also for the parents also, praise the Lord. So uh, we'll give more information, but I did want to uh, let you know that, that uh, uh, be thinking about what the Lord would have you to give in order to help uh, pay for these uh, that do not have money themselves to be able to pay. If, if somebody has uh, three or four children, it's hard to come up with enough money to travel, let alone be able to pay for a camp. And uh, I wish that we could get all our food free and our gas free and, and not even have to charge anything. But uh, the fact of the matter is, is that it costs money to do anything. But the Lord has always provided. And I know that God's going to speak to hearts concerning this fund me. So be in touch with us. Uh, we love you. We're for you. Amen. So glad that you're able to be with us this morning. And I hope uh, you have been blessed by this service and that Christ has been made more real to you. Amen. Love you and appreciate you. God bless. See you next week.